If you can figure out how to turn attention into money, there will never be a period in your life where you are broke. I discovered how to do this about six or seven years ago. And ever since I learned the fundamental relationship between attention and money, I have never been broke. And I'll give you a framework called the ACES framework uh, towards the end of this video where you can actually replicate this process and go do it. And every time I've ever done it, I've made instant money. But about six or seven years ago, I was in this Facebook group and uh, it was run by this woman who taught the same stuff everybody else teaches, you know, online marketing. I mean, look, there's only three markets. There's wealth, health, and relationships. And online, when you learn things like online marketing and how to make money online and blah, 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 this, there's only so much people can say. It's all really the same stuff. You know, there's limited new information out there. And she was making a lot of money teaching this stuff. And I was in her group. I bought one of her programs. And I remember going through the program and thinking that I was going to learn something new that I hadn't already learned from all the programs I've taken, the books I've read, the experiences I've had. And when I took the program, it honestly wasn't that good. It was, it was pretty bad, actually. And it didn't matter because she was getting so much attention by how she portrayed herself. She had this kind of like punk rock thing going on and, and she would get massive amounts of attention. So even though her actual products were relatively subpar, people bought them like crazy. And I was utterly fascinated by this because what she was doing that was working wasn't in her program. It was for all the world to see and nobody could really see it, but I started to notice it. And one day I'm in a group and I'm asking questions like, how do I get noticed? How do I get attention? How do I get people? Like, I know the same stuff you know. I know the same stuff this person knows. I know the same stuff. I'm good at this same stuff. I have these skills. Why are people noticing them and why are they not noticing me? She said to me, Dan, you got to be yourself, right? And I thought, all right, well, what about me is fundamentally me? Well, I like to make people laugh. That's one of my gifts. My father was a, a shock jock in the 80s. He had like a com comedy radio show. And so I learned this sort of offbeat sense of humor from him. And so after months and months, years of getting no attention online, even though I had the same skills these other people had, I thought, you know what, what the heck? So I sat on the couch, actually might have been in this very room. Yeah, behind here. And I got butt naked. Actually, I had my underwear on, but it looked like I was butt naked because I took a big emoji, the smiling emoji, and I put it over my junk. And I went like this. And I had the emoji over my junk, and I posted it in her group. And I said something to the effect of, uh, who wants to learn marketing from this guy? And to be honest with you, it was a desperate attempt. I, I'm pretty sure I had lost my mind that evening, and I was so frustrated that I was like, screw it. And I had a temporary lapse of judgment. And I'd never done anything like that before. I tried to be professional. I tried to, you know. And... Uh, Lo and behold, I wake up the next morning and like all these people started following me. They started joining my Facebook group. It went nuts. And then ironically, the woman that owned the group got mad at me because I actually was being me. And I guess I took her advice, but I, she only wanted me to take her advice if it was in line with what she wanted, you know. But she didn't like that, so she kicked me out, whatever. But I had such a massive part of her community that kind of came with me that it, it kick-started me. And I had, I had attention, right? And now I was like, well, wait a minute. All these people are paying attention to me now. They're in my group. They're laughing. They're like, this guy's great. What do I do? Well, I started talking about the same stuff I always talked about. People started buying my stuff. And I was like, wait a minute. Let me get this straight. I literally did the same thing I did before. And I made no money. But now I figured out a way to get attention. And then I still did the same thing, and now I made money. What's happening here? And that's when I realized a fundamental principle, that there's only so much that can be said about anything. That's already, it's all already been said. But if you've ever heard someone say, I just can't listen to that guy. I just can't listen to that girl. I just can't listen to that person. That person drives me nuts. The thing is, everybody can't listen to everybody. People resonate with certain people that they can just receive from. If you know something that everybody else knows, you sell something that everybody else sells, there's going to be a certain amount of people out there that would prefer to listen to you. Whether you're better, worse, doesn't matter. They prefer to listen to you, period.
And if you can go out and get their attention, you can get them to give you the money rather than somebody else. I remember I took Derek Halpern's course on how to create online courses. And when I took the course, it was actually really good, unlike other courses. It was, it was really good. But I already knew all the stuff, right? And I'm thinking, wait a minute, I already know all this stuff. Why is this guy making so much money? Why is he selling so much of this? And I remember him talking about how he pays $300 for a haircut. And that got a lot of attention because a lot of people thought it was a waste of money. A lot of people thought it was... It was worth it because, hey, I got to look good. Why not spend $300 on a haircut? And his whole thing was he would have somebody, I believe he said he had somebody come out to his home to save time and all this. And it, and it created all this attention. And people would buy it. Look, how many people sell how to create online courses? How many people say how to do Facebook ads? How many people say how to lose weight? Look, guys, eat good and work out. Oh, my God, right? Like every workout program ever is literally some form of eat good and work out. But if they got your attention... And that other person didn't, you give them the money for them to tell you to eat good and work out. And on and on we go. And so I discovered that if I can just get attention and I'm not terrible at what I do, I can make a lot of money. And that's when I came up with the ACES framework, which I'll, I'll share in a second. It's funny, I became friends with Derek Halpern and uh, guy's brilliant, guy's absolutely brilliant. But I learned so much from guys like him, guys like uh, Grant Cardone. I remember Grant said to me one time when I was at his office, he said, you don't have to be the best, you just have to be the most well-known. And two very big flaws I have are, number one, I focus so much on making something good that I get to a point of diminishing returns where it's like, it doesn't matter if it's any better. It's, it's good enough. Like, it's way good enough. And now I need to focus on getting more people to see it rather than making it just that marginally better. And so I've always focused on making things better and redoing things and making things great versus getting it out there. And I, I've been off balance on that. That's why I haven't grown as much as some other people. And the second thing is, unfortunately, when you get attention, it's usually because you make a provocative statement that is fundamentally in line with your values. And that allows you to say, hey, I believe in this thing, even though to some it may seem extreme. My issue is, I grew up in Florida, in the burbs. I mean, I didn't, I had no, no Ivy League school. No, it was just like typical Florida whatever, okay? And so I never really had any true values instilled in me. My parents just tried to do their best to make the money and, and pay the bills. And I've always fought to understand who I was in life. I've gone from being a man of faith, to being a, an extreme atheist, back to being a man of faith. I've gone from being a, a married with a child to getting divorced and being a playboy, literally living the Jordan Belfort life with a yacht with a dozen half-naked women on my boat to realizing the emptiness of that life and remarrying my ex-wife and being a family man again. I've done this roller coaster. And when, when your life is a roller coaster, it's very difficult to decide, hey, here are my values, here are the things that I can say and I can stand behind provocatively to get that attention and align that with my brand and what I do because I'm always learning and growing and changing. And so that is something that I have struggled with. And I will not sit here and tell you I have figured that out. I'm working on it, but that is a huge challenge. If any of you are dealing with that, I fully understand that's very difficult. But I digress. At the end of the day, if you can get attention, you can absolutely still turn that into money. And here... Here is how you do it. So I call this framework ACEs. And even if it's not aligned, and even if it's not fully in terms with your personal brand, and blah, 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 this will still work. It'll still make you money, which is the funny part. So ACEs stands for attention, conversation, education, sale. First, you do something to get the attention. That makes people go, oh, you have the next 30 seconds of my time. The next thing you do is you take that attention and you create a conversation. That conversation then connects with that person and opens them up to giving you more attention. You then educate that person on what they need to know or what they need simplified to make a purchase decision. Most people don't buy because they're confused. Not because they don't believe you, because they're confused. And if they understood something, they would buy. So when we make things like video sales letters or sales pages or sales videos or speeches or webinars or even YouTube videos. What we're really doing is we are educating and remo removing confusion so that you can buy. That's how that actually works. And then once you 
educate and you remove the confusion now when you ask for the sale because you've got the attention, because you've had the conversation, you've created the connection, because you've removed the confusion, now the sale's easy. See, what most people try to do is they try to go for the sale. They skip the attention, the conversation, and the education, and now the sale's 50 times harder, and they go, oh, my God, business is so hard. It's so hard to sell. Sales is icky. Sales is mushy. Sales is gross. I don't want to sell. I just want passive income, even though there's no such thing, and I'm just going to keep saying that to myself until I'm 47 years old, and I've accomplished nothing with my life, and my kids hate me because whatever, right? Like, the point is, is that you skip the thing that makes selling easy, makes making money easy. And that is why if you can get attention, you can convert it into money very, very easily. So I'll give you a perfect example. One time, uh, I wanted to teach people how they could charge more for what they offer. There are people who sold agency service. There are people who sold consulting, people who sold even online courses, and they weren't charging enough. I always used to tell people like, look, stop charging too little because it's it's sort of like if you offered a Lamborghini for the price of a Ford Taurus. What's the first thing someone would ask? They'd be like, well, what's wrong with what's wrong with the car? What's wrong with it? Discounts don't create sales. They create doubt. They create skepticism. And so it's a lot easier to sell something when the promise matches the price. And so I did this thing called the raise your prices challenge. And basically I was teaching all about how to charge what you were worth for several days on a virtual event. So I got attention by filming a music video that was a direct parody of a scene from the movie Step Brothers. And in the movie Step Brothers, they had this music video where they had these like beat up middle-aged looking women on this crappy boat. And they were like, boats and hoes, boats and hoes. And it was this funny thing. So I did a music video where I hired um, (laughs) more attractive women uh, on my yacht. And I called it book and close and the whole thing was like book and close book and close all about you know book a call and close close the sale and it was funny and it was over the top and it was cringe and it was ridiculous and it was meant to be and it got tons of attention so now it's like oh I got attention right and I said now that I had the attention I said okay go sign up for the raise your prices challenge go join me for five days of content and I'll teach you how to charge your worth well how many times have you heard somebody say charge more How many times have you heard somebody say, charge your worth? How many times have you heard somebody say, you can sell high ticket products and services? They say it all the time. But how many times have you seen somebody do a music video parroting a famous movie and being ridiculous and jumping up in the air and splitting their legs and shooting money cannons everywhere and getting attention and then saying that, right? So the attention was that skidded video. The conversation happened when I got them on the challenge. When I got them to this event, there was a certain amount of people who bought the VIP option where they could talk to me for one hour prior to the main session. And I just got to chat with attendees. Well, 95% of the sales we made from that event came from those attendees that were chatting with me. So I got to actually have conversations with them, build a bond with them, build connection with them. So that's the conversation part. Then the actual content of the virtual event, when I taught things, that was the education. And All I really did on that was event was show them why it's easier to charge more, why people who are willing to pay more and have more money make decisions faster. And therefore, it actually is easier to make more money when you sell high ticket. Anyway, I I teach all this and then I ask for the sale and we did $850,000 with five hours of content. I spoke for five hours, hour a day for five days, and I said, give me a bunch of money and I'll do a. 12-week program where I teach you how to sell high ticket, blah, 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 blah. Same crap everybody else sells. And I made 850 grand in a week. Why? Because I got attention, I created the conversation, I educated and simplified things for people, and I made the sale. That ACES framework exists in all forms of selling marketing. doesn't matter how you do it. doesn't matter what tactic or technique you've learned on how to make money or how to market, or how to advertise. At the end of the day, you're getting attention, you're creating a conversation, you're educating people and simplifying things, and then you're asking for the sale, the, if you're good. And if you fundamentally understand that process, it doesn't matter what form of lead generation or what form of selling you do, as long as it's infused with that ACES framework, it will work. Getting attention, even if you don't know what you're doing, you will figure out what to do with it very quickly if you get it. But if you never put yourself out there and you're never willing to be different, you're never willing to poke your head up 
amongst this crowd of people and do something different. Be provocative. Be the extreme version of yourself so that you shine out and you stand out amongst everybody else. You'll never know what to do with that attention because you'll never experience that attention. You'll figure out what to do with it real quick when you get it. Even if you get the wrong attention, that's fine too. Apologize or just don't. Somebody else will do something stupid and people will complain about that for a week and then everybody will forget about that dumb thing you said. The truth is, what is the downside of not trying? The downside is you live the same life now for the next five years, the next 10 years, the next 15 years, the next 20 years, which probably, if you're still watching this video, is pretty crummy. And I get it. I've lived a crummy life prior to getting rich in business and blah, blah. The point is, what's the upside? Like, what's the worst that could happen if you put yourself out there and you do something and get attention? A couple people go, oh, that guy's stupid. And they go, oh, what an idiot. Great. That's the downside. What's the upside? The upside is you make a million dollars and your, your whole life changes. So think about that. What's the worst that could happen? You live your same life that you already are living anyway and a couple people call you stupid. Or you live this amazing life. You make millions of dollars and you grow this amazing brand and you do something with your life. So if you're wondering, should I put myself out there? Should I try to get attention, even if I don't know what I'm doing? Well, ask yourself, what's the bet? What do you stand to lose? What do you stand to gain? If what you stand to gain is astronomically more than what you stand to lose, and you're not doing it, then you're just choosing to be poor. And I chose to be poor until the day I chose not to be poor. And not long after that, I wasn't poor. I hope this helps. Trust me, being poor sucks. Talk later.